I only had two bites of this thing. This is amazing. I can confidently say this is the best tamale I've ever had in my entire life, hands down. Vamos a celebrar que ya llegó. The moment is now, así la lo. Dale play y suscríbete, let's go. Voy a job de Santa María. Voy a job de Santa María. Voy a job de Santa María. Hello, Voyagers! Guys, we made it to Bogota. So we're here in the very first stop that most people make whenever they get to Bogota, which is the Plaza Bolivar. Yes, as you can see, it is insane. So there's a lot of people here, a lot of families, everyone's having a lovely time, a lot of vendors. Yeah, so this is the main square. Um, all of the government buildings are here. Parliament is actually here behind us. But anyway, guys, um, there's people everywhere. We see people that are dressed up in traditional uh, Colombian wear. And there's randomly alpacas all over the place. <laughs> so we're gonna see if we could get a picture of who with the alpacas. And uh, um, yeah, we're just gonna walk around the square and yeah. uh, enjoy Bogota. known for their ajiaco and their tamales. And what better place to try them than La Puerta Falsa, which is literally right around the corner from here. So come on, let's go. As you can imagine, this place is extremely popular. Look at this line, guys. As you can see, the place is tiny. So it's made up of a lunch counter, and upstairs there's some seating, but I think I want to say approximately about 25 people is their max seating in here. So sometimes you do have to make a little bit of a line outside, but it's totally worth it. made with rice, like smashed rice, and corn, and chicken. And it's wrapped in a banana leaf. Yes, yes. We just got our hot chocolate. So, a little bit about the hot chocolates. It has cheese in it. Marco's never had a hot chocolate with cheese before, so it's going to be amazing for him. And we just got our tamal. So, unfortunately, they were out of the ajiaco, but we will be getting that at some point while we're still here in Bogota. And here, we have an envuelto. So it's like a masa, and it's made with corn, uh, sweet corn, and there's cheese in it. So it's a little bit sweeter than what your traditional like tamal would be. Yeah, so we're really excited to try this too. So this is a traditional Colombian hot chocolate, and it comes with cheese, which you're supposed to add to the hot chocolate. I know it doesn't sound like it would be amazing, but it really is. What you do is you break up the cheese and you just throw it inside. And the cheese is going to get really melty while it's in there. You have to try to do it right away so that the hot chocolate doesn't get too cold and the cheese actually melts. So I have to try this tomorrow first because this smells good, looks good. There's a huge piece of chicken in there. That's a whole piece of chicken that's just sitting in there. Mm. Now let's get a piece of chicken. I've only had two bites of this thing. This is amazing. 
can confidently say this is the best tamale I've ever had in my entire life, hands down. I've tried some pretty good tamales. So let's check in on how our hot chocolate is doing and how the cheese melted. Mm -hmm. How I would do it is we can literally just have a sip of hot chocolate with the cheese. Mm. Or Take a piece of bread, dip it in the hot chocolate, grab a piece of cheese, and eat it all together. Mm. Oh, everybody knows I love hot chocolate. <laughs> but with cheese, never tried that before. Let's give it a shot. Ooh, that's very different. The saltiness of the cheese definitely cuts the sweetness of the chocolate, giving it a completely different flavor. You like it? I love it. Now let's try a piece of this bread. They give you two pieces of bread. They give you this one here, as well as this one. And we'll try both of them. The combination of the bread with the chocolate and a piece of cheese, that's the winner right there. We destroyed that. Destroyed. Well worth the wait. <laughs> yes, it was so good. So our bill came out to 22,000 and that included the hot chocolate, the tamale, and the envuelto. That's about $5.50. A lot of bang for your buck. Hey guys, so we're back in the Airbnb, and while we were here, I figured why not just take, give you a little tour of uh, where it is that we're staying. So right now we're in the neighborhood of La Candelaria, which is the main touristy spot. Uh, it was about a 10 minute walk to get over to the plaza that you guys saw earlier. So um, we're staying in an apartment building that has roughly about, I think it's 20 or 22 floors. Um, it has private security in the front, um, also has access to a gym, um, there is a business center where you can hook up your laptop and work there if you need to, as well as a, a games lounge where they have ping pong and, and other games. But let's take a look at the Airbnb. To get in the main door, we have the living room seating area over here, and then next to it, we have a little bit of a workspace that you can set up your laptop and get some work done. And then over here, we have the main bedroom area. It's a, it's a studio apartment, so uh, everything is open, but exactly fits our needs. TV in the room. You guys, take a look at this fantastic view of Bogota. This is what we wake up to. Of course, being an Airbnb and one that we enjoy, there's a kitchen. Yeah, we love getting an Airbnb with the kitchen because it means that we can have some meals at home and you save a little bit and you're not eating out every day. Exactly. So comes with a microwave, stove, and a refrigerator. We did some groceries already. And of course, we have the goodies that Denise picked up. We call this limoncillo. ¿Cómo le dicen ustedes? Mahoncillo, mahon. Mahoncillo. We call it limoncillo. And in uh, the Dominican Republic, in my great grandmother's house, we used to have a big tree that they used to climb. We would eat these all the time. I cannot believe we found this. So, mangosteen. Mangosteen? So I'm gonna try it. Wow. That's incredible, guys. It tastes like a lychee and a mango together. Delicious. So excited about these. And so that's a mangosteen. And we're gonna call them limoncillo because that's what they call them in the Dominican Republic and that's what I know it as. Um, so mom, so excited to have these. I wish I could share them with you. Yep, so we're gonna enjoy those later. But anyway, 
Um, then we also have the bathroom or the shower. All modern touches to finish this place. So, um, overall we're paying $26 a night for this place, which is fantastic value for everything that we get. We're right next to the tourist center, which is easy to walk over, which is great. Um, if you guys are interested in taking a look at this Airbnb, drop down the link below and check it out for yourselves. There's two companies here that do the free food tours. We ended up booking with Beyond Colombia and they said you meet over at the Museo de Oro and look for someone with a red umbrella. And we did just that. My name is Rafa, short for Rafael. Rafael was my grandfather and was the way my mom used to call me when I was doing something wrong. So she said Rafa, everything was okay. She said Rafael, because I was doing something wrong. So Rafa is fine. So we're gonna have like a journey to a regular eating day uh, here in Bogota, a person who lives and works in an area like this, just like me. So we're gonna have a breakfast, a lunch, dessert, ponches, that is the meal between lunch and dinner, and we are going to uh, talk about why and when do we eat those kind of things in every place. We're going to that corner, make a right, then we make a left, continue going, and we stop in a very good empanadas place that maybe you can go back later and try if you're gonna stay for several days here in Bogota, that's a good choice to have empanadas. So in here we're gonna try a smaller version that is called empanada casera. It's filled with potato and beef. So we're at our first stop and we're starting off with empanadas and we're going with the traditional which is carne y papa. You can see they're like a quarter of the size of what they normally are. But what I love about this spot is that there's so many different types of sauces to choose from. So I went with tartara. Um, so it says it's like a very mild um, spice. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Mm. That's a good empanada. And I got mine with the tatara as well, but I also put the spiciest sauce, which is the ahi puro ahi. It's spicy, it's the spiciest, but it's not that spicy. I guess we can handle spice. So we're gonna try this. I actually asked them how long they've been uh, selling here and they said they've been here for 10 years. So let's see how amazing this is. Super fresh, but the char is everything on that. For our third stop of the day, we're having lunch, and of course, we're having their most popular soup, which is an ajiaki. We can't wait to try this. I'm actually gonna wait for the cream and the capers to put it in, and then I'm gonna try it. So, capers. And I love cream, so I'm gonna add a bit of cream. Maybe it's had more. I'm gonna add rice. Try even more. And aguacate. I don't know if I ate it or not. Chicken, chicken, the rice. It's good. A little bit of everything. I'm good. Fourth stop is going to be some more lunch. Denise is not going to try it because we're having two different types of meat. The first one is veal, and the second one is what's it called chupibara, which is uh, 
a rodent. Not only is it a rodent, but it's the largest rodent in the world. This is gonna be interesting. I couldn't do it. <laughs> but she's gonna have an arepa, so she'll have something here. <laughs> is a bit thicker. This one is more like a sandwich with two wafers. Very nice. Uh, traditional one, blackberry and cheese. But they have cheese. I'm sorry. So our fifth stop was for dessert and we got some obleas. So I got the traditional one which has the arequipe or caramel with some cheese. This looks similar to the one that we had in Mexico but this one is fresh instead of the prepackaged one and can't wait to try it. I am good. Well, we can't finish a food tour in Colombia without having coffee. So this one is an immersive method because the coffee is going to be inside of the water. So they preheat the water because you can do it with only this fire, it takes a long time. They preheat the water here, you put the fire, when it's uh, hot enough, the pressure is going to be starting pushing the water to the top and you put the coffee inside. This little sponge is going to make a little turbulence, let the coffee be like uh, in touch with the, uh, the coffee, in touch with the water and after a while, uh, after the extraction, she's going to remove the fire, so the pressure decreases and the water go, goes back down and all the coffee is going to be right here in the middle. This one is better for an intense coffee. So now she's making the turbulence. It's a little bit down in Cauca and this is from uh, the coffee that you're going to... You can smell a little bit. So guys, we just wrapped up our tour and everything that we tried was absolutely amazing. If you guys are ever in Bogota, make sure you check out Beyond, Beyond Colombia. Colombia and get a tour with Rafa. Cool. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> well, that was an awesome food tour. Yeah, that was amazing. If you're in Bogota, we highly recommend Beyond Colombia for their free food tour. Remember, free tours aren't necessarily free. You do have to tip, but that's up to you, whatever it is that you want to. But that was amazing. Yeah, Rafa was an excellent, excellent guide. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you get a chance to check him out, definitely do so. Um, right now, we're just sat down. We wanted to, you know, take a little bit of a break and sit for a bit. We just finished the food tour, yet we got some ice cream. So yeah, I don't know. I also don't know why we're eating ice cream in Bogota. I think most places in Colombia can be warm, but wow, Bogota is, it's pretty cold. Yeah, it has been chilly. I literally just took my jacket off, but um, yes, it has been so cold here. I don't think we were ready for that. So what was your favorite food of the day? Oh, that's a toughie. I mean, Maybe, the, the ajiaco was really good. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I think the ajiaco was probably my favorite and then the empanadas close in second. Yeah. So, guys, left it to the end, but were you able to guess just by looking at the two pieces of meat, <laughs> which one was the capybara and which one was the veal? Kudos to you for trying it. I couldn't do it, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I hope you guys sound it off in the comments below. However, drum roll. So the longer, uh, redder piece of meat was the capybara. And in my opinion, it was a lot more flavorful. It was extremely tender. Um, looking at the actual animal itself, I'm not sure if I would necessarily say that I wanted a full plate <laughs> of that. 
but for me I think it was an awesome experience to, to try that out um, and the coffee guys we're from New York we like our coffee light and sweet with a lot of milk and a lot <laughs> of sugar um, so the coffee it was good nice uh, nice way to end the day but yeah. probably not the way that we would have drank it I actually added a little bit of milk <laughs> to the coffee and I got yelled at by everybody they were like oh my god you're putting milk in this coffee after they took so long to make it was like oh anywho <laughs> yeah um, we had an awesome day eating yeah. learning about the foods of Colombia and Bogota and um, yeah we're excited to try some more food while we're here yes guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. We've got a whole lot of things that we want to do here in Colombia and starting off here in Bogota. So until next time, guys, enjoy the voyage. Adios, voyagers.